shot. Come on. Yeah! Leaves it. A very historic moment, the 100th tournament since the relaunch of the PWBA Tour. The relaunch, of course, happened in 2015, and we will award the 100th title tonight from Pacific Avenue Bowl in Stockton, California. It's the PWBA Stockton Open next on Bowl TV. And welcome everyone inside Pacific Avenue Bowl. My name is Emil Williams Jr. and pleased to be joined by the one and only Sid the Kid, Sidney Brummett for tonight's Step Ladder Finals. And uh, Sid, what an opportunity we had to watch the round of 12. Uh, we saw Daria Payok uh, strike when she needed it the most uh, to make her way into the Step Ladder Final. She qualified fifth, but that's only one portion of tonight's story. Lindsay Boomershine, the number four seed, looking for her first PWBA title. The number three seed, Brianna Clemmer, man, she had to just pretty much ran them over uh, this morning in the round of 12 or this afternoon in the round of 12. Our second seed, Jordan Richard, uh, nearly shot 300, shot 299 in the final game, almost caught Sherry Tan in the process. And speaking of Sherry Tan, looking to have a wire-to-wire -wire victory here tonight. She has led after every round. She's been your leader, and she will have one game to claim her fourth PWBA title and the $20,000 prize check. Sid, you watched it with me this afternoon. Uh, we both marveled at what all five players, and really six or seven, because it went from three to eight for the longest periods of time to make a spot or have a spot on this show. Uh, what stood out to you, and what can we expect in this opening match between Lindsey Boomershine and Daria Payo? I think it's going to be a matter of you know, who can calm their nerves down best first. Lindsay and Daria are in unique situations. Lindsay looking for that first title. Daria looking to get the monkey off of her back. Um, this pair was quite friendly to Daria early earlier today in the round of 12. She figured it out very quickly. So I'm interested to see if she can do that again here. Um, I'm just thrilled to watch some good bowling, honestly. <laughs> I'm really excited to see what happens. It's a 43-foot lane condition. You said you had an opportunity, of course, to uh, bowl on the pattern. You bowled on Friday two rounds, uh, not uh, from a traditional perspective, right? We didn't see a lot of fourth arrow, certainly. There were some players who did end up there, uh, but we saw a few players, especially early on on the fresh, going up the boards, minimal angle, and it resulted in a ton of strikes, especially early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we were bowling on a pretty high friction center. And if you'll notice where it says tank A conditioner and tank B conditioner, it's the same. It's curve oil. That's one of the higher friction oils from our friends at Kegel. And essentially, there's no reverse oil, right? 2.5 mils is not a lot whatsoever. However, it didn't break down as quickly as I expected it to. We could stay straighter a little bit longer. And when we could do that, when we could stay to the right of that big block in the middle, girls were striking like crazy. And then the girls who continued to bowl good were the girls who, when they migrated left, their rev rates could let them get their ball to go through the pins the right way. Robin Graves with the final announcements. The opening match set to begin. Lindsay Boomershine, the higher seed. She will have choice. And she has elected to have, according to the announcement, Daria Payok to start the match. Sid, briefly, uh, when you are the higher seed, what are some of the things you're looking for when you have to make that choice? Is it, I want to finish on a certain lane, or I want the opponent to you know, be in a position maybe they're not comfortable in? I think it completely depends. You know, in this instance, I think Lindsay is very smart. Having Daria finish on the right lane, pin the ball doesn't want to go through the pins as well on the right lane for any player. And so it could be to her advantage if Daria needs all three in the 10. First shot, left, definitely left, and a six pin, and you just talked about maybe the opening shot jitter, certainly. 
Been a little minute for Daria back on this stage. 2017 PWBA Rookie of the Year. She is a one-time champion also in 2017, picking up the Greater Detroit Open title. Mentioned she had to perform in the 10th, having to first, I believe it was a four pin, mm -hmm. to make in the 10th frame, and then needed nine and got 10. The best thing you could do in that scenario is she starts with a spare. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest improvement um, since I've been on tour and seen from Daria is her spare shooting. It has been phenomenal so far this season, as well as, you know, in her practice videos that you can see if you follow her on socials. She's really working hard at them, and I think it kept her in it and allowed her to make the show today. Here is Lindsay Boomershine from Brigham City, Utah, 37 years of age. First shot. And a 2 8 10 and Lindsay with some surface. And uh, that was very common, certainly on this 43-foot lane condition. We did see some surface on the fresh. Yeah, absolutely. She's throwing an exotic gem, which is a pearl version of their very popular gem. It's a bigger ASIM. So the exotic gem is going to get through the front part of the lane a little bit, and she would put surface on it so that way it will still slow down in the middle part of the lane or the mid lane. Early split, can we have early fireworks? She will take the count. Count always important. That actually almost came back to uh, be a negative for Daria. She uh, left a four, six, seven late and did not get any count. And of course, it literally came down to mere pins on the difference between she and our sixth place finisher this week, Birgit Nordwex. Two pins, Daria Payok advanced by. Yeah, for Lindsay here, I feel like the first shot simply was two around it. That is her miss, and that is going to make the ball go a little bit long. If she can stay calm through her release, I think we'll see more strikes out of her. Boomer shine. Well, that, that time it looked like a very, very high quality shot there in a 4 9. And for Lindsay, you know, she's been in this situation several times. Five top five finishes. A couple of runner-up finishes as well. So obviously has been close. It's been uh, kind of the talk for her, if you will. But she talked to me uh, a little bit yesterday and said she's just bowling for her. She's bowling for me in her words. She knows Aiden is good. She knows Hank is good. And she will take the count there. And so she's out this season just bowling for her and not worrying about the outside noise, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. What's going on in the outside world, what people are telling you, worrying about things you can't control, it does affect our bowling as much as we would hope that it doesn't. Knowing that our families are good is really important. So Pai Oak watching Boomer shine with two splits to start. Should get that arm swing hopefully a, a bit freer. Second frame, bang. That was an incredible shot from Daria. Much more online than the first one. First one was just a little bit up the lane. What were some of the, uh, especially on the fresh, prominent places to play, if you will, uh, that helped see some of the high scores? We saw several players come out the gates plus 100 uh, through the first three on the fresh a lot. Yeah, you're going to be somewhere around 15 at the arrows and somewhere around 8 to 10 down lane, depending on your rev rate. So Daria will be a little bit further right than that, possibly a little bit further left at the arrows. She's at about 16. Yeah. That one's left down lane. And pretty much every person that scored well was in that exact same zone. Um, all the ball reps, even during the practice session, were saying, hey, just you know, play catch with the, the tracer at 10 down lane, and things will probably go pretty well for you. And we expected the scores to be quite high. We had a little meeting with our Brunswick team after the practice, and Jeff said, hey, like, expect it. It's going to happen. 3-6-10 attempt. So she'll take it. Sometimes the hard way is the good way. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and Daria is very up the back of her spare ball. And so it's going to deflect to the right rather than to the left because it's not hooking. And it gives her a better opportunity to make that spare. You now back to Boomer Shine. And she gets that to step up in the third frame. Let the 2 8 10 in frame one on lane 12. She 
Good look, front facing. And the ball of choice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that she can smile. You know, I think that gives her a little bit of hope in this game, having a positive attitude and not letting the first two frames define how the next eight are going to go. That, that, that shot was a lot more quality off of her hand. She rolled it a little bit more, not as around it. So the ball has an opportunity to pick up a little sooner and go through the pins the right way. We saw Boomer shine earlier. Miss a single pin in the 10th frame of one game, and then uh, the next game did not let it bother her whatsoever. In fact, started with the front six or seven, ended up shooting 260 plus. Fourth frame. Need some help? Oh, get out of there. It does. Oh, wow. When I was watching the girls um, have their warm up on 11 and 12, on lane 11 in particular, I saw Jordan and B. Clem throw quite a few further to the right, and their facial expressions told me everything I needed to know. They didn't expect it to hook from there. So, lane 11 seems to have. A little bit more give if you get it to the right early than lane 12 does. Seven pin attempt here for Boomer Shot. All right, she'll take that can of corn for Boomer Shine. The first couple of marks, the smile certainly is now on display here for Boomershine. Now over to Pai Oak here, fourth frame. The Nova for Pai Oak. <laughs> Quality, perfect so far on the right lane, Sydney. Absolutely, she's throwing a little bit of a cleaner ASIM as well, similar to Lindsay. However, the Nova's core is slightly smaller. Daria's rev rate is higher, so she doesn't need as much of an engine as Lindsay does to get her ball to pick up soon enough. However, I don't I don't know if you, the audience can hear the people next to us, but when her ball's going down the lane, they're saying push. And one awesome piece of advice I got from one of my coaches at Wichita was listen to that little voice in your head. And even the audience, like the fans, a little right. Ooh, goodness. Just in front of the 10 pin. Finish that thought. Uh, even the audience can see, like, ooh, that one's got to go. Right, it's not getting through the front part of the lane quite well enough. She might need to make a small move on lane 12. Best news there for Daria. Just a much better shot on the left lane. As we now into the fifth. Opening match, if you are just joining us, Emil Williams Jr. with Sydney Brummett. Season opening event on the PWBA Tour in 2023. <laughs> Historic season opening event. This is the 100th tournament since the relaunch of the PWBA Tour in 2015. I remember watching the first tournament of the re relaunch. Um, Lindsay's best friend, Alicia, won that title. And Alicia is a alum of Wichita State, go Shocks. And it, it was just so cool. And it became an inspiration. I was still at school. And, you know, I changed my plans. I was supposed to go to medical school. I changed my plans to come out and bowl on tour. And I, I'm excited because there are other young girls that can do the same thing. Boomer shine. Get up the hill, and it does. Light mix working well for Boomer Shine in the fifth. I'm sitting in the booth. I'm like leaning back in my chair. Hook, <laughs> hook. And I think she's thinking the same thing. Her body language at least tells us that she is. Neither competitor has doubled to this point. Boomer Shine can change that here. Deficit to 12. Nobody struck on the left lane yet, actually, as well. Oh, that's solid. Bang. Oh, yeah. There we go. 
I think that was her best shot of the match so far. And she knew that one was good. You saw it from release to mid lane. And the best result you can have, 10 back. Huge double now, Pio to respond. These players, of course, representing SPI, Storm Products. See Steve Jacobs. We've seen that hit a lot. JT and I were talking about that throughout the tournament, getting that hit six to take out the 10. You like that hit, right? I would have if, if it would have happened for me this week. My six pin kind of <laughs> sat in the flat gutter. <laughs> I think I shot many more 10 pins than Daria did. But no, when, when you have that hit, you know it's going to be a good week. Your ball's doing the right thing. Pai Oak shot 14.43 for six in the round of 12 today. It's left Push. as well. Mm. The ever popular 4.79 is the replay. There comes a point where these girls are just too good for both of them to miss, quote unquote, this many times on the left lane. And if I'm the ball rep in the back, if I'm you know a close support system who knows what's going on, I'm gonna say, it's probably not you. It's more likely the lane. Bounce. So if I'm Steve Jacobs, it's, uh, hey, we gotta make a move. It, it's three times in a row on that lane that, you know, the first one I think was her, but. The next, the next three, in my opinion, have not been. It's just hooking early, earlier than she'd like anyways. Hold an opportunity here for Boomershine. Throwing two quality shots, her best coming in the sixth on the left lane. First one to three in a row. That's a great Indeed. shot. really good to me it looks a little softer than it was at the beginning of the game whether her adrenaline has just gone down a little bit or she consciously is thinking to be a little softer either way the ball is hooking at least a foot or two earlier and it's going to pay off for her that's really the only difference between the first frame where she 2 8 10 and the last three that have all struck Shine with the lead and in control as we head to the eighth Right now, max score sits at 238. It's another good one. Oh, she's in the groove now. It took a couple of frames, but this is exactly what she was looking for. Absolutely, she's just playing catch with the tracer down lane. That's all she's doing. You know, everyone's going to get there differently. Daria's going to get there differently than Lindsay, who's going to get there differently than Bree and Jordan. But ultimately, your ball has to get there down lane and be making the motion towards the pocket when it gets there. Big frames now here for Pyok. Lucky to get the 10 out there, just the 2 4 eight. to be a little right, still a lot right. Absolutely, it looked to be tough angle, about 13 at the arrows, and maybe seven or eight down lane. Simply won't get back from there. Okay, good spare. It's a tough spare when you feel a little lost. You know, you're going to make the moves off of your strike ball. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> educated guess here. But if you do it well, when you're making the 2-8 or the 2-8 combinations, you can use the information, the move that you make for that spare to line you up for your next strike ball. So hopefully she's doing that because she may need all of them in the 10th. Max is 208. 
And I feel there are only certain players who can get that to come back. She is one of them. As the ball is going down the lane, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm shaking my head. But her rev rate's high enough that the pins just kind of fall down. Well, the ball is certainly in the, the court of Lindsay Boomershine here. She has thrown four really good shots in consecutive fashion. Looks comfortable now to those first two frames. There's another, and that about puts it away. Her ball motion's phenomenal. You know, she's making good shots, but they all haven't been exactly the same. They're not exactly the same with the arrows, exactly the same down lane. They're not exactly the same speed or exactly the same hand. And anytime you feel like you have to be just perfect, ball motion's probably not that great. There's always uh, some sort of characteristic throughout a tournament that has to be important. So for example, at this event, a really aggressive hand was important. But your speed didn't have to be just right. And so you can adjust your bowling ball that you're using or your surface prep that you're using to get great ball motion, which I think Lindsay has done here. I score 238, but a mark will seal the deal here for the win. And there it is. In a split second, it looked like Daria Pioke may have had a chance to step up in the 10th and possibly win the match, and boom, just like that, this match is over and Lindsay Boomershine is moving on. Quick little messenger action. You need those breaks to win on this tour. Oh, absolutely. You know, you get excited, and then you also remember, hey, that's a flat 10 with a little velocity. That's all it is. So what's my move or what didn't go quite right that I needed to beg for the head pin to come off the sidewall? We <laughs> celebrate them, right? But also <laughs> note that it's a flat 10 in real life. Second and the tenth. Beautiful again. And now Sydney Brummett taking it to the mind of Lindsay Boomershine and her ball rep. She may try something on the fill here. I'm, I'm imagining, but what might she try and where might she play if, if she does try something here? Yeah, knowing that Daria's going to get probably three more shots on 12. And then you're going to have two players with higher rev rates than you come and get some practice shots. The lane's going to break down a little bit more. So she has to be looking at something more than likely a little bit cleaner or see how far left she can get with this ball before it doesn't want to have a chance at going through the pins the right way. There's the hug. There's Daria Payoke. Uh, fast tracking the match, if you will. It's up in the tent, but uh, if this is a preview, essentially, of what we are going to see from Daria this season, uh, you know, Sid, I hate to tell you, but you better watch out. No, I'm so okay with that. I've, as I've gotten to know Daria, I am, you know, grateful to, to be around her. You know, I think she is, you know, not just someone that the young ladies on Instagram or socials can look up to, but she's someone on tour that we can all look at as an inspiration. She's so genuine. She's so herself, unpo unapologetic about it. And it's a joy to watch her compete. I always hope that I'm crossing with her just because I like to watch her bowl. So I'm going to root for her, you know. 238 to 208. The final score. We will see the number three seed here in a moment, Brianna Clemmer, but first and foremost. We will hear from one of our gold partners, and then on the other side, we will have our first bowling ball giveaway, courtesy of Storm. Your game is about to get better. Introducing SPI Plus, a new digital magazine monthly from Storm. This month, practical advice from Danielle McEwen on setting goals and reaching them. Practice tips from Shannon O'Keefe and SPI Plus columns on your fit, fitness, even traveling tips. SPI Plus. Visit StormBowling.com, enter promo code 2023, and get the entire year free. Take your game to the next level with SPI Plus. 
passing my love of bowling down to my daughter has been a gift, and I'm praying that one day she becomes better than dad. It's become a very important part of my life. My name's Jeremy Hatcher, and I've been bowling certified since 1989. If you're for bowling, bowl certified. Bowl certified. Bowl certified. Bowl certified. If you're for bowling, bowl certified. Giveaway is underway. And someone will win a Storm bowling ball of choice. Mill Williams Jr., that is Sydney Brummett. And uh, say we've got Brianna Klimmer coming up next. Uh, the number three seed last year's 2022 PWBA St. Petersburg Clearwater Open. She set the three game scoring record during that event, was on the 900 watch. So we know she can strike. She put that on display as well. <laughs> A five-time Team USA member, what do you anticipate from Brianna Klimmer here in this match? Yeah, the only thing to watch out with Bree, and it was the same, you can't really say issue, because she went, I believe, 200 plus over for her round of 12 block, but her, her bowling ball, just watching the practice, is a little bit quick down lane. You know, she has a lot of rotation, a high rep rate. The question will be, will she nine pin too often? or will the ball go high too often? If she can find a way to get her ball to slow down early enough and go forward at the right part of the lane, I think she'll be very difficult to beat. She's, she's playing her aching. And that's a scary place for Brianna Klemmer to play from for everybody else. A couple of seconds left. Hope you've submitted that entry for a free storm bowling ball and congratulations to Bonnie Smith. Bonnie, you have won a Storm Bowling Ball of choice. The uh, Bowl TV marketing squad will be in contact with you via email to get all of the details and everything figured out to make sure you get your Storm Bowling Ball of choice. So congrats, Bonnie, and thank you to Storm, proud gold partner here of the Professional Women's Bowling Association. Interesting note about Rihanna Klimmer, last year, she made the season opening show also in 2022, and that was at the, or in Rockford, at the Cherry Bowl, the historic Cherry Bowl at the Rockford Open. Here she is again, season opener, and finds herself as the number three seed. She was the number two seed last year. This is the ball that we saw her get pretty comfortable with which is the Radical Outer Limits. Yes. She also has a uh, Columbia Cuda in the bag along with an Ebonite GB4 Hybrid. Thank you to uh, Jeff Smith for providing that information uh, as well. We know Bree is going to be uh, in this situation perhaps a bit further left a little bit than uh, Miss Lindsay Boomershine. What might be troublesome if we see Brianna Klimmer run into any? It's going to be that her ball doesn't want to slow down in the right part of the lane right now it doesn't seem like it's an issue whatsoever it seems like she's actually experimenting with how far left can I get and how far right can I get it so she looks pretty comfortable to me I personally I love the outer limits I think it's a great piece it's very unique um, it's gonna allow her to be steep enough but also it rolls early enough that she won't have to worry about the ball not going through the pins the right way. Lindsay Boomershine will start the match. Of course, Klimmer, the higher seed. We saw Daria start the last matches. Lindsay Boomershine had a lane choice. This time it's reversed. So Boomer Shine to start left lane. It's a great shot. Great shot indeed. It appeared like she made a small move to the left. 
smart, you know, considering all the shots that Free just threw down the lane. And if my uh, memory is correct, that would be nine in a row going back to game one. First shot, Clemmer. Oh, splits the eight, nine beautifully. And what's it, Bree's actually not that much further left than Lindsay is. Um, yeah, not that far at all. Maybe one board to the left with her feet. Bree sets it down a little bit closer to her ankle, so the launching will be a slightly steeper than Lindsay's, but not as much as I think we would have expected. Glimmer for an early double. That comes up high, she'll leave the 3-6. And Bree slid about one, maybe two further left on this left lane than she did compared to the right. It makes me think that she saw the left lane was hooking more during the practice. It'll be interesting to see how much she moves on the next one. First things first, spare to make. And handles it. Last year, Boomer Shine had uh, four match play or top 12 finishes. Cashed eight times on the 2022 season. Lindsay's always someone that we on the tour know as consistent. You know, you can expect her to play well. Shows how close can she get to making the show and now winning. Yeah, you can see her making a motion with her hand there. It's a little more around it, very similarly to the one that actually 2 8 10 the first game. But now the lanes are a little bit more broken down. It still hooks soon enough, and she's essentially just begging for it to go through the pins well enough to not have eight far apart. Single pin to handle. That's left. She'll handle it, though. Didn't quite stick the landing. I was telling my college kids all year, this is math class, not art class. Doesn't always have to be cute. She's got to add up to enough. Almost right over uh, 25 at the arrows there. Again, big thanks to everyone here at Pacific Avenue Bowl. Dave Bowles actually runs the pro shop that you see in that shot. He's actually sitting on the right side. On the right, Lindsey Boomershine. John Nakashima and his great staff here, the proprietor. There's co-founder advice. Boomershine. Oh, what a break. Ooh. And that deserves a smile, too. <laughs> that was left the whole way. It's almost like she's just trying not to have what happened on lane 12 happen again on lane 11 instead of you know refocusing and and coming back to the moment someone made an astute uh, observation i think it was jill talking about columbus jersey i believe it also indeed is the winning jersey and that's a winning shot right there on the right lane it two is for two on lane 12. It is. One of her roommates after, you know, Brie made the show said, oh, she needs me to go out to the car to get the Clover jersey. <laughs> Which is absolutely true. I think all of us out here are at least a little superstitious. I feel like when I win in a color, I'm probably going to run it back as well. 
the reigning St. Petersburg Clearwater Open champion from 2022. And her second title. And it's out of trouble. Just a 10 pin there. That was nearly at 4 10. She moved maybe one. I would have moved way more than one after her first shot. I didn't think it was that bad. If I was her, I'm moving two or three to the next frame. Right, she'll take care of the spare. And a similar pattern brewing here for both of these players. You know, it's the same thing that we saw the first game. People, you know, Daria and Lindsay were having a little bit of trouble with this left wing. And again, through almost four frames, through four frames, we are seeing a little bit of trouble for Brie on the left wing. Boomer shot back on the right lane. But does have the chance to double. One that she got away with. First shot, 10th frame, game one to allow her to advance past Daria Pioke. No messengers this time. What happened? Well, I saw that the ball went forward down lane a little bit too early. So essentially, another way of saying that is a very common term. The ball rolled out. It lost energy. It had used everything it had a little bit too early. Just in the field, if you're learning how to see that, especially with the bowling ball that Lindsay's throwing, all those colors on the bowling ball, you can watch them. And the purple on her bowling ball started to go from facing her to facing the left-hand wall much sooner than it did the shots before. And that means that the ball is migrating through its preferred point much sooner, which is how you can tell when your ball is rolling out. If you're throwing a solid color bowling ball, you can always go into your pro shop, ask them to mark your PAP with a white piece of tape, and you can practice watching that and see how the different um, locations of that white piece of tape through the pins results in different pin carry. Excellent advice. Boomershot looking to rebound. Fifth frame. Mm. Similar hit, but just the 10 pin. Yeah, I saw that one do the exact same thing. It was just a little bit heavier on the head pin. So she gets the seven out. So she has a couple options. She could rotate it more, right? Maybe go a couple left, throw it a little slower, rotate it a little bit more. Or she could go to a ball that has a little bit more length or stores its energy a little bit longer so it can go through the pins better. Like maybe she has another one of those exotic gems that just has less surface on it that she could go to. Another 10 pin to deal with. Had one in the second. And that is taken care of as well. She's got the making of a close match here. Glimmer perfect on the right lane, lane 12. You see Boomershine in the back. You see Jacobs on the left. Dell Ballard Jr. in the middle. Jim Callahan on the right. Ball reps for Team Storm. Jeff Smith for Team Brunswick and the brands of Brunswick. Glimmer with that familiar outstretched off arm. Began to do that in McKin at McKendry. There it is again. How about that shot? It was really good. Solid off of her hand. She knows it. It appears like she's seen, like, at the arrows, she knows. And she's just watching to make sure it goes through the pit the right way. I love that she's stopping to take a deep breath. You know, she's closing her eyes before she even gets on the approach. Taking that time to be nice and grounded, centered before she goes. Yet to strike on this left lane. 
Can she do it here? Pitched it right early, and that's a very good one, two, four. All things considered. Yeah, it appears that she slid into the same spot as the last one. And it makes me wonder if she came back to Jeff and said, you know, in the fourth frame, hey, it was me. And it's really easy to see ball motion from back here. When you're bowling, it's not so easy. You can't see the first about 10 to 15 feet of the lane, depending on how tall you are. That's a great spare. And so you have to really trust the people behind you to know, hey, your ball hooked early. You have to really, really trust them. It's a huge spare there, remains clean. That's Clemmer, Boomer Shine. Ball change. That was gonna, that was gonna be my next question for you based on the last couple of uh, hits for Lindsay. And here it is, not wasting any time. She's switching to the new duo. Mixes them up. Similar part of the lane. From my eyes and what I think goes through the pins well, Right. It doesn't matter the person. Good ball motion through the pins is good ball motion. And it's still a little forward. I would be worried about the flat 10, the swisher 7, where, you know, for example, on the right lane, we see breeze ball exit through the 8-9 every single time. That's what we're really looking for. That's You know you have great ball motion. This one a little bit different the way uh, the opening match Shaped up to the way this one is shaping up, but also similar at the same time. Oh, what a shot there by Boomer Shine and the first to double. That was incredible. I thought she got around that one a little bit more. Yeah, she definitely did. You can tell by where the green is on the bowling ball. It's facing her a little bit more on that shot. Ball soars more energy, goes through the pins. Awesome. The similarities are where, and someone just mentioned it in the chat, you know, it took Lindsay two frames. She had an opening, opening uh, splits against Daria in the opening match and then settled in and then ultimately rattled off eight in a row to take the match. This is Clemmer, needs it, has it. Right lane, still perfect. It's a great shot. She's taking a second to talk to Jeff. I think that's really smart, you know, focusing on the right lane and then deciding what we're going to do on the left. And, and, you know, in some ways, this could be the shot of the match here for Clemmer simply because she's got to finish on the left lane. And so if she can have something certainly positive in the eighth, you have to anticipate Lindsay is then now going to strike out. There it is. Oh, that was so interesting. She made a small move to the right, kept it in front of her a little bit more. Yeah, she slid about two further right. It's more in front of her, a little firmer. And that was her move. I was following her on 31 and 32, the second block. And on our team, we tend to share a little bit of information. And she said, hey, I'm having trouble on this lane. My ball wants to hook early. I thought it was to move left. And instead, I... I just shut down my angles a little bit. So I'm wondering if she's seen that same thing on lane 11 that she saw similarly on 31 and 32 earlier in the week. Boomer shine. Ball chain still looking good. Three in a row now. I think that was a really telling shot from Lindsay. A little bit further right than the other ones. Max scores, Clemmer 240, Boomer Shine 238. Clemmer is going to finish first. And as of now, she can step up in the ninth and 10th and handle business.
Boomer Shine trying to put more pressure here. Ninth frame. Just a little left. Bang. <laughs> Coming through again is Boomer Shine. All change. If she ends up certainly winning the match, without a doubt, the key to this four bagger. Now to Clemmer, who has been perfect on the right lane. To keep the momentum, there it is. And now she will step up in the 10th frame, needing a double and nine pins. Yeah, what I loved about watching that shot from the front angle of Brie is you can see her eyes. I mean, if you watch them, they're down lane. As she sets up, she's taking a deep breath. And during that deep breath, she draws them back. And you can tell that she's kind of drawing the path that she wants her ball to go through. And then they stabilize on her target. And it's almost like this switch flips, and she goes. Again, anything less than the double. Wishan's going to have a chance right off the bat to win this match when she steps up next. Left lane again. Oh, Brianna Clemmer putting in work. She'll need another. That's how you hope to throw it when you need it. Looking very poised. Just saw her talking to Jeff. She put up a finger and said one more. I'm thinking she means I need to move one more. And I would agree that ball exited the pin deck straight through the eight pin. Must have. Oh, and there it is, Sydney Brummett. Jason Thomas and I mentioned it earlier. The only strange hit we saw this week was a pocket six pin. You just knew it would show up at some point. Ill advised right now. It's crazy how every building just has that one weird hit that, that you don't expect to see. You know, I have my notebook sitting in front of me from the week, and I always write down things about the center that I want to remember for next time. And I think pocket six pins might be at the top of the list. 229 for Boomer Shine. For Brie. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, yes. Rihanna Clemmer. Yes. You know, if, if you're Brianna Clemmer right now, you're saying, I bowled a super professional game. I made my spares. I figured out the left lane. She got a bad break when she needed it. Ultimately, she pulled an awesome professional game. Now it's in the hands of Lindsay. Shine needs the first strike. A little around it. Oh, and the seven pin does not fall. She needed it. And Brianna Clemmer is going to advance. You see the replay there, just this off seven pin. It's tough. So the number three seed, Rihanna Klimmer, will advance. She holds off Lindsey Boomershine, who had the opportunity, ball in hand. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this isn't the show where, the only show we're going to see Lindsey on this season. She seems really sharp, happy to be here. You know, at the, the moment of the step ladder for me so far was you know, two opens from Lindsay. She comes back, she strikes, and she had a smile on her face. You know, she could have let those first two frames define how this match was going to go, and instead she continued to persevere <laughs> and ultimately you know, find herself a fourth place finish here at the season opener. 
229-216. Clemmer defeats Boomershine. Clemmer will advance to face Team USA teammate Jordan Richard. But first, it's bowling ball giveaway time. Roto Grip is next. And first, a word from Roto Grip and a giveaway on the other side. Hi, I'm Stephanie Johnson. Hi, I'm Shannon O'Keefe, and, and this, this is Duo. Duo. Announcing the latest breakthrough from Roto Grip, the Duo, a new symmetrical bowling ball that performs on and off the lanes. HP3 striking power, plus a portion of every Duo purchase will be donated to Big Brothers and Big Sisters. That's Big Brothers and Big Sisters everywhere. We're Shannon, and, and that's, that's the, the Duo, Duo from, from Roto Grip. Steaming up to make a difference for Big Brothers and Big Sisters, you and the Duo from Roto Grip. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Emil Williams Jr. with Sidney Brummett. Brianna Klemmer sneaks by over Lindsey Boomershine, 229 to 216. Uh, Sid, first the key ball change by Lindsey Boomershine results in a four-bagger. Key moves made by Brianna Klemmer on the left lane, which was her struggle lane uh, during that match. Uh, both perform well. Uh, Klemmer doesn't get the carry. The second shot in the 10th, same situation for Boomershine. Uh, her first shot in the 10th frame. What a match. Absolutely. I, I think it was entertaining, and it was, you know, the tale of two gutsy moves and a matter of which one got the carry the soonest, which one got the hits the soonest, and it came down to clean frames ultimately, right? If Lindsay has, you know, the 1-7-10, that is right. just a 9 right. spare, she wins the match. Absolutely. So I think it's the tale of Bree bowled a really professional, clean game. Was it easy? No. Was it beautiful? No. But her score was higher than Lindsay's. And at the end of the day, this is still sport. And yes, the lanes are confusing sometimes, and the path isn't always clear. But it comes down to, is my pinfall higher than hers or not? There and Breeze was simply higher than Lindsay's. You see Jordan Richard and Sherry Tan getting a look at some equipment. By the way, that Roto Grip bowling ball giveaway is coming to an end. Hopefully, you click Submit Entry. Again, big thank you to Roto Grip, gold partner and a proud gold partner of the Professional Women's Bowling Association Tour. Michael Ward, you are a winner. Congratulations. Got yourself a Roto Grip bowling ball. The Bowl TV marketing squad will be in contact with you via email, so be on the lookout for that. Get you all the details and everything you will need. Get that piece of equipment. Speaking of uh, Roto Grip, duos there's another one there from Jordan Richard and uh, talked to Jordan a little bit before and uh, for her it was was about uh, she was she was on top of the ball progression and she said her game plan they really didn't change through each round uh, she threw the same bowling balls and kind of made the changes uh, getting from one bowling ball to the next at about the same time every round also she mentioned uh, infinite physics was generally the start then to a high wire, then to a duo. She felt that she wasn't probably going to get to the infinite or, or start with it simply because by the time she got to the TV pair, uh, they would already be broken down. So we've seen the duo go down the lane. We've seen the high wire go down the lane. Uh, what are you thinking here for Jordan Richardson? There's got to be a little comfort in her high wire. She's had a lot of success with that ball in the past on the PWBA tour. And anytime you can provide yourself comfort in these higher, quote unquote, pressure situations is a positive. And the ball motion of it looks pretty good. So if I'm her, I'm gonna settle myself in that. I'm gonna choose that option and then just go out and make great shots. A 
indeed. Bronze Nick, appreciate you tuning in. Clemmer, the final three games of the round of 12 to ensure that spot because nothing was guaranteed at that point. She went 267, 264, 269 to shoot 800 for the last three. Now every higher seed has chosen for the other person to start on the left wing. I think every higher seed has been genius. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmer to start. Similar uh, shot from a pitching right perspective that we saw in the previous match against Boomershine. Hopefully she'll get that out of the way early here, frame one. Absolutely, it looks firm and right. At that point you're just hoping that there's not a red circle on the scoreboard. Unfortunately there is, but this is a very makeable split. She'll give it a run and handle it. Well done, Rihanna Klimmer. She aced that. It's textbook. Two, four, ten, perfection. Booyah. If you leave it, make it. Open? Right? What open? <laughs> no open frames. Now the opening shot for Jordan Richard. Didn't like it based on the body language, but she will <laughs> smile and walk back. Hits up on that one a little bit. But it was far enough right that it doesn't really matter. When your ball motion's good, your ball motion's good, like we said during the first match. You shouldn't have to be just right or just perfect. Yes, patterns can be difficult. But even at the U.S. Open, the hardest tournament of the year usually, the person who wins doesn't have to be perfect. For an early double. Six into the ten beautifully. Much better shot here from Jordan. Cleaner off of her hand. She's actually getting it pretty far right down lane in comparison to everyone else that we've seen so far. She's at eight down lane about. Back to Klimmer. Looking for her second PWBA title. Oh, she has had the right lane on lock. Absolutely. It is true that the right lane has been tough for everybody else. It's difficult to get your pins to fall down on that lane. The ball sometimes, on occasion, depending on the person. We saw it with Lindsay. The off hits just don't happen as often. If I was Jordan. I'm not so sure that that's the same for Brianna Klimmer. She's had more trouble on this left lane. But it depends. Am I trying to play offense or defense here? On which lane I'm choosing to start on. Klimmer representing Kalor, South Carolina. Beautiful shot on the left lane for the 25-year-old five-time Team USA member. That's incredible. She's two to three further left down lane than Jordan is. Jordan using the high wire. Two time PWBA champion. Make it three in a row to start. And uh, how many times did we say Jordan had the front six I was just in the round of 12? The front eight, the front nine. At least, I would say at least four of the games. I'm like, hey, Jordan's getting off to a hot start down there again. Right. <laughs> Let's run that back. That fun TikTok sound, like do a quick little wraparound. That's Jordan. 2018 PWBA Rookie of the Year. When I first titled the PWA Greater Harrisburg Open in 2018, set up a very nice run of shows, specifically in August, 
of that year. She made every show in August. She had to take a step back. May have been distracted to the left. Axed it to go, and it did. Four bagger to start. Yeah, that wasn't that quality of a shot from Jordan. I'm being honest, the reality is there was a distraction and she didn't start her routine over again. And if there's anything any sports psychologist in the world will tell you is if there's a distraction, if there's something that interrupts your routine, routine creates not magic. It doesn't make you throw it good, but it does give you a sense of relief. It's familiarity. It's another good shot from Bree. Lot 10. And so if there's a distraction that happens, you heard Jim Callahan yell, start over. And I think that's the best advice that he could have said to her in that moment. And I wish we would have seen her set the ball down, start the pre-shot routine completely over again. Because sure, she got away with it, but there are also some times that we run yellow lights and nothing bad happens. Sometimes we run yellow lights and bad things happen. So kids, start your routines over. We gotta check Sydney's license. <laughs> Yellow lights. Well done for Glimmer. That was a nice uh, analogy, though. Shout out Brian Kane and Tyler Pazic for that one. Just not in the school zone. Listen, my sister said, "Yellow lights mean go faster." <laughs> my mom was not thrilled <laughs> when she said that in the car with me. First time in a while, Clemmer did not strike on the right lane. Saw the early 2-4-10 conversion followed by a double. Then single pin make, fifth frame. <laughs> that wonderful hit, six into the 10. This one is trending toward the higher scoring scenario that we've seen all throughout the day and the tournament. That ball's starting to go a little forward down lane, similarly to what we saw Lindsay's doing when she was in the exotic gem right before she got into the duo. The outer limits is starting to roll out slightly earlier than it was in the match prior. I think if Bree finds a way to win this match, we may see her go to that GB4 hybrid. Five in a row. Wrapped hand instead. Been a quality shot making all day for the 27 year old Jordan Richard. Uh, I said it during the round of 12, I'll say it again. If there's one person's ball roll on tour who, if I could have it today, I would, it would be Jordan. It's so good. Goes through the pins, incredible. And it allows her to not see huge differences in lanes where people may have them, you know, quite a bit different. She sees very small changes because her ball roll is so good. What specifically makes it that way, in your opinion? Oh gosh. Well, Jordan has uniquely really long hands. You can kind of see it when she's like holding a bowling ball. And so the amount of time that is had between her thumb exiting the bowling ball and her fingers coming out of it feels like <laughs> decades um, in comparison to some of the girls out here who have smaller hands. So it allows her to be really underneath the you know, bottom half of the bowling ball, roll it off of her hand into the lane. It's very smooth. Trying to get back on the strike train. Oh my, did not anticipate that, 2 8, 10 Yeah, off of her hand, she didn't like it. Body language, she's up pretty quick. Maybe missed it a little bit at the bottom. Opens the door for Bree. Feels like a little bit of breathing room. Jordan's human. Well, we know a player with certainly Columbus caliber. All it takes is a small opening. She will take the count, however. First open for either player. It's Jordan Richard in the sixth frame. Quick chat with the reps. Or back to Clemmer. Looking to seize an opportunity. Made a couple.
couple of shells last year. 50% winning percentage last year. She was one of two. Oh, that right lane just keeps cooking. Yeah, it looks like she got around that one a little bit more. It's common right now in, in the bowling industry to say, oh, my ball's not going through the pins the right way. I just, I need to ball change. And there are all these skills that the women on tour have because they didn't get out here without them. Their versatility skills, and one of them is rotation. And Bree has a pretty wide range of rotation that she can use. She can get around it a little bit more, and that will save energy and get the 10-pin out. In front of the 10 goes the messenger. I was personally asking for that one to hook. I wasn't sure it was going to. Line 11 feels from back here like it's getting tight down lane. Just a 10 pin here for Brianna Clemmer. Seventh frame already. This one is moving quickly. I think that's what happens when they throw like one shot of frames. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick up the pace. <laughs> The spare and the lead momentarily for Brianna Clemmer. Sometimes we like that on tour because then we get a longer lunch break. Go somewhere a little bit more fancy. Oh, look at you. Okay. It's not your first time. Your experience now on this tour. Just once in a while. Seventh frame. So take that. That's a great shot. 7-10 goes a little late. It's not my favorite hit, but it's pretty fun to watch. So obviously the bad juju in the left lane in the sixth. But she anticipates. She's got bad vibes in the left lane. <laughs> what do you anticipate here in this eighth? I think she just has to make a better shot. You know, we saw the one in the fourth with a little bit of a distraction, gets it in front of her, and then comes over the next time, makes a not-so-quality shot. One's better. Oh, it was super, superb even. A double there for Richard. Reclaims the lead. Yeah, when you make a shot that you know, like she did in the fourth frame, that's just when you're not all there. Sometimes you pay for it later on, and you don't even really recognize it until, you know, the match is over and, y and you have 20 20 hindsight, right? It's something that uh, Jordan focusing on, just focusing on what she is doing and not score watching or anything like that. Back to Clemmer, right lane again, seven pin goes. Bree's ball motion right now is going to cause her to hope a little bit when her ball goes through the pins. And she's just not as sure. Where before, right, we said, oh, at the arrows, she knows that it's good. And here you can watch her body language as she sinks a little bit. Like, okay, is, is all 10 going to go down? Big shot here for Clemmer. Close. Similar hit that Jordan Richard just got two frames ago. That's a great shot from Bree on that left lane where things are a little bit wishy-washy. Sometimes you just have to get up and make the shot. It's not clear what you have to do. You just have to will the pins down. So I'm going to hit my target, and it's going to have the best result that it can. Max score, 255 for Richard. To keep the lead, and the ball in her court has to strike here. And a bit of a weak 10 there, as you saw the six pin just kind of lay idly in the right gutter. Yeah, you saw her say, get it there. 
right? So that tells us we, we talked about the beginning of the game. She gets it a little bit further right than everybody else. It appears that based on, you know, what she's saying, get it there. She's using that friction. Everybody else was kind of trying to avoid it, using it as their miss room. Apparently she wants to get it there for her ball to go through the pins the right way. Right, she'll handle business. <coughs> and now her max score dips to 234. I don't know about letting Brianna Clemmer finish on this right lane. Oh, yeah, this is, you know, and we're just basing it obviously on what, you, what we've seen all tonight, folks. She has owned the right lane. But JR. Jordan Richard trying to make it as tough as possible. A double would help that. First one. Oh, oh my goodness. Hey. <laughs> that was right. <laughs> you had just talked about if Jordan's ball just going to eclipse the head pin, good things tend to happen. <laughs> It does, and it comes from that great ball roll. It really does. And, and also it comes back to watching the practice before any of the show started. This left lane had a little bit of give to the right in comparison to lane 12, which is why I think most people are choosing lane 11. We have a little bit more room down lane. Must strike to force Clemmer to strike, and she buries it. What a shot by Jordan Richard. And I know the family certainly watching at the bowling center, she told me. Their family is such a tight-knit crew. The support that they have for one another, the love that they have for one another through the good, the bad, everything. It's got to be so grounding for Jordan to know that you know, no matter what happens right here, no matter how I perform, my family's gonna love me. They're gonna care for me. Three shows last year. Already making one this season. Gets all three in the tenth to finish at 234. And Deanna Clemmer will need the first strike in the tenth. At minimum, quality count on the next shot to advance. But again, as you mentioned, Sid, the percentages are in her favor on lane 12. Wasting no time. Clemmer. Oh, my goodness. Just said it. She got around it. Would not like it. And Jordan Richard is going to advance and face the number one seed, Sherry Tan, the lone lefty on the show tonight for the season opening title here at the Stockton Open in 2023. What an incredible tournament for three. Wow. Something certainly we did not expect. 234 to 214. You know, we all have tendencies when we really, really want one. And every time I've pulled a three, when she really wants one, she hits it just a little bit harder. Mm. Mm. Well, folks, the title match is now set. Sherry Tan, the number one seed. She has been the leader throughout the tournament. Jordan Richard was close to catching her, nearly overcame the deficit. Uh, just 15 pins ended up being the difference when it was 200 plus for a very long time. It is Sherry Tan, it is Jordan Richard. That is next, right after this, from Team Brunswick. We want to welcome to the PWBA winner's circle, Brianna Clemmer. 
Chris Culkin, the Long Island Classic champion. Dasha Kovalova, your 2022 PWBA Pepsi Classic champion. And congratulations to Birgit Norreich, your 2022 Queens champion. Passing my love of bowling down to my daughter has been a gift, and I'm praying that one day she becomes better than dad. It's become a very important part of my life. My name's Jeremy Hatcher, and I've been bowling certified since 1989. If you're for bowling, bowl certified. Bowl certified. Bowl certified. Bowl certified. If you're for bowling, bowl certified. Sherry Tan, Jordan Richard, that is next. And we see Sherry Tan taking a few practice shots. Sydney Brummett as we begin the final giveaway of the night, courtesy of Brunswick. Again, watch the bottom, the lower left third of your screen. After the countdown, make sure you click submit entry when prompted and get out of full screen if you are in it. She has been uh, certainly the toast of the event so far, said the lone lefty not during qualifying on Friday. She advanced, of course, to Saturday or today this morning. Lone lefty in the round of 24 and round of 12, obviously. And now uh, a familiar situation that she has been in. She's a three-time titleist. All three of her titles have come from the number one seed. A seed where we always talk about it in our sport, right? It's hit or miss. For uh, uh, Sherry Tan, she's had more success than not in that position. She does have one loss from the top seed, but three is better than one last time I checked. Oh yeah, 75% is pretty good. I would take it. I mean, the numbers from a number one seed perspective are not good. It's much less than 50%, you know, and if I'm bowling the tournament and somebody looks at me and says, hey, you only have to bowl one game for the title, <laughs> I'm gonna take that though. And that's gotta be the feeling for Sherry Tan is, you know, I've bowled great this entire event, I get one more game and I'll take home the trophy. All I have to do is stay within myself and it should take care of itself. I think that is absolutely the game plan. And there's no need to make any, you know, uh, crazy changes, if you will, right? Now, obviously, what she may see in the lane play during practice session. Don't forget, click submit entry, folks, uh, for this Brunswick bowling ball. Uh, so you anticipate more of the same from Sherry. No one has been on that side of the lane except her when she has come over for her shots on the practice pair. Congratulations to uh, Karen and Keith. You got yourself a Brunswick bowling ball courtesy of the brands of Brunswick. The USBC or Bowl TV marketing crew will be in contact via email uh, to get you all of the details. Uh, Sid, how, how do we see this one playing out? I'll give you both scenarios. What does Sherry Tan, in your opinion, have to do to get this win? Really just stay within herself. If she makes... 10 quality shots, Sherry wins the match. And for Jordan Rich. Figure out a way to beat Sherry Tan. You know, you know Sherry's gonna come out, she's gonna have good ball motion. You're gonna have to force her to make shots. So Jordan has to stay on top of her ball motion, know that I'm gonna have to put 10 good shots online. If I don't, the likelihood of me winning is really low. Uh, that's pretty simple, certainly. For Sherry Tan, looking for her fourth title. Last year, she did capture the Bowl TV Classic. And then, again, mentioning she was the number one seed, the top seed in the uh, PWBA Players Championship. That was a major show in 2019. And the top seed of the Storm Sacramento Open in 2016. Uh, she did have a loss in 2019 at the uh, opening season opening, uh, Nationwide Greater Cleveland Open losing to Josie Barnes in the title match. In fact, she's lost to Josie twice in title matches. Uh, and the last one coming at the 2021 U.S. Women's Open. 
Tan, who recently celebrated a birthday. She turned 35 years old on May 2nd. Here yet again with the Team Singapore squad featuring Bernice Lim, her sister Daphne Tan, Shayna Ung, and New Wei Finn. As we look at Sherry's final shots. Yeah, the only thing Sherry would have to worry about is if her right-handed friends got far enough to the <laughs> left that they were running into her front. But they're barely crossing each other right now. It's just through the first maybe foot of the lane. So there's not too much to worry about from her standpoint. Robin Graves with the final announcements. What a tournament. The 100th title since the relaunch about to be awarded. It's going to be either Sherry Tan or Jordan Richard. Who you got folks in the chat? Let me know. Are you taking Sherry Tan? Are you taking Jordan Richard? Interestingly, I think we're watching Steve Jacobs hit Sherry's ball with a little bit of surface before we're starting. Appears that she's gonna throw a 900 global reality. During the practice, she was also throwing a couple shots with a physics. Two bigger asymmetric pieces from the SPI line. Dan to start, and she chose to start as the higher seed and starts with a strike on the left lane. No, I think she still has. Oh, numbers. excuse me. I thought the same thing. Well, well, we were all, okay, Robin. Robin fooled us. Is this April Fool's? Is that what's happening here? You got some bad information. Sometimes you just mess up. We'll put that in the outtakes. <laughs> Blooper reel. Now I want to know how many shots she actually has left. Right? I agree. All right, so she hasn't chosen to start, but I think she did just actually tell Damon Sirocco what her decision is going to be. Weird. Jordan's going to start on the left lane, I think. Higher All seed. Right, Making someone finish on the right lane. Now. Crazy. Crazy. Is set. Ms. Joy Richards is going to get us started here. Who's going to take the crown? Now it's official. It's like being in the TV truck when you, you get that info. <laughs> And we all start doing the things that, you know, we say, all right, so so it's going to start. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Just nope, kidding. the opponent's going to start. Yeah, hard break. Hard break. We are pretty close to San Francisco. You know, make sure you pull the handbrake for a second. I see a lot of Sherry Tan. I see a lot of Jordan Richard in the chat. This is Jay Rich, the duo. Yeah, that's a ball mm. change. And a nine pin to start. Title match if you are just joining us. PWBA Stockton Open here. Season opening event 2023. I think that's a really smart ball change from Jordan. I think there came a point in the last match where she was feeling like she had to make the high wire go through the pins the right way or she was begging for it to get the 10 out. And any time you feel like you have to make your ball hook or make your ball strike, it's probably not going to go in your favor. Sherry Tan, the number one seed, again, nearly tracked down by Jordan Richard. Jordan shot 299 in the final game of the round of 12 this morning or this afternoon. Sherry Tan did counter with 247 to keep the top seed and had to just win one game to win her fourth PWBA title. The lefty. There it is. So she's throwing the physics on the right lane. We saw that her final practice shot, she left the 7-10 with the reality. I 
interesting. She's playing them very similarly to how the people on the right hand side of the playing right hand side of the lane are playing them. She's just not gonna see as much breakdown. But I think one thing that gets missed on the left side of the lane is their fronts go away when those on the right hand side of the lane get far enough left. And they have to find a way to combat that, which is not easy at all. So we may not see their feet move a whole lot, but they are certainly making changes to get their ball through the, the front part of the lane the right way. For the early double. And she wraps a mean seven. And a very good shot. You can hear Team Singapore. They are certainly nearby and rooting on. Sherry Chan on the grid. What was a very good shot. I envy that they get to hang out with their teammates every day. That they get to train and just love bowling. You know, how they do with their teammates. It's bigger than them, right? The flag on the front of their shirt means a whole lot. You know, every time that they get announced at a pro-am, it's, you know, part of Team Singapore, Sherry Tan. It's really cool to see their camaraderie and how much they love and care for each other. All right, so handle business on the seven pin. Richard now, originally from Tecumseh, Michigan, uh, living in Maumee, Ohio. Finished last year ninth in points. And statistically, it was a really good year. Third in average, 212.04 last year. Again, three shows, 11 caches. That was time for the tour lead with Shannon O'Keefe. And she wraps a 10 pin. It's a great shot from Jordan. Like we've said on this right lane, the entire show, it's how do I get my ball to go through the pins the right way on the right lane? Ten pin attempt, turns it back, taken care of. Jordan this afternoon, 227, 242, 287, 243, 205, 299. One of those games is not like the rest. 15.03 for six during the round of 12 today. An average of 250.5 if you're scoring at home and splits the 8-9. That's a great shot from Jordan. Probably a small move to the left off of the 9 pin. I like that this week she just gets to be her. Right, it's Jordan's A game. It's what she's good at. I think it's fun to watch any woman out here who competes at a high level do what they love to do and what they're really good at. And Sherry Tang, good look at the setup. She doesn't love it. Oh. Gets the seven out anyway. <laughs> the right lane being kind. It's not very common. You see someone from Singapore fall off their shots. I feel like I have to brace myself when they do. I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen. They're so disciplined with everything. That's a, I think that is the best word. Everything they do is with a purpose. They get in at a certain point, a certain time, whether it's the practice session, whether it's their own practice, they typically arrive to the next city very early, at least a day or two. Warm up together, practice together. Intent and deliberate with what they do. And the success certainly speaks for itself. For a double, there it is. Another great shot. That one looked a little bit more in front of her than the last one on that lane. 
typically when a lane hooks more for somebody on the right hand side of the lane it hooks less for somebody on the left hand side so it would be no surprise to me lane 11 hooks more for the girls on the right hand side of the lane if it's a little tighter for sherry Richard, can she double for the first time? And that one didn't sound good. And uh, it sounded like the middle of a week 10, and it is. Talked to Jordan beforehand. She talked about her game plan, which was kind of the same every block. And most importantly, perhaps, the ball progression for her was the same also. She would typically begin. Oh, wow. Girls got hips. Typically begin with an infinite physics. Didn't get to that point here for uh, the step ladder finals. And you can see. Ooh. She'll take it. You saw the high wire get some play, which was the second ball in her progression today. And she's already into the duo here which was the third ball in her progression. Yeah, we have to look at the two lanes independently. Just because one lane is doing something doesn't mean the other one is. Bowling is unique in that way. It's a good shot. High flush. You know, bowling is unique in that way that you know, our playing field is not always the same. It's not even the same you know, when you're bowling a title match. These right and left lanes are so different. It seems on this right lane, Jordan could use a little bit more rotation or a ball that's a little bit quicker, saves a little bit more energy. It's going pretty forward through the pins, exiting through the nine pin, which is where those flat tens are coming from. It's like we've said the whole match. How do I get my ball to go through the pins the correct way on lane 12? and making her ninth championship round appearance of her career. And every year it's in limited events. It's got to go. Mm, and an eight pin. Split second eight ten there, but the ten fell. And what's crazy is I think that one strikes on lane 11. But like we were just saying, it, it doesn't really matter if it would have struck a lane 11 because she's not pulling on that lane. You know, treat them as independent variables. What I'm doing on lane 12 is what I'm doing on lane 12. What I'm doing on lane 11 is what I'm doing on lane 11. And they pay no mind to each other. This is the 100th event since the P relaunch of the PWBA Tour in 2015. What a moment. Both players here. An early stint on tour for Team Singapore. It kind of depends sometimes on their own schedule. Uh, and certainly the PWBA schedule. Whether they come or start at the beginning of the tour. Sometimes it's been in the middle. Sometimes it's been actually towards the end as well. They will be bowling, of course, uh, obviously Stockton. And then we'll bowl in Spokane, Washington next week. And then the first major of the season, the USBC Queens in Las Vegas in just a couple of weeks will be at uh, Historic Samstown. More history for the PWBA Tour coming up. And how cool that we're having the PWBA Hall of Fame dinner and night at Samstown. It's the history is going to be really cool. Definitely looking forward to that. Six frame tan. Kicks the seven. Great shot. A little gentle fist bump. Like, she's so soft. Like, she's so cute. And also <laughs> so frightening. I'm scared of her a little bit, <laughs> but I also know that she's kind. She is very funny, too. Great, great sense of humor. <laughs> Nothing funny about that shot. 
mean. That one absolutely stored more energy going down the lane. Great shot from Jordan. I think she got it right a little bit sooner. Like we saw her motioning with her hand in the last match. When it wasn't going through the pins the right way, she just kept saying with her hand and her body language, I have to get it to the right early or in the right spot that she's seeing in her mind's eye. Seventh frame for Jordan Richard in a time match. Great break there. Asked it to go again. And just a four pin, what happened? Looks a little left, but also, as we've seen, that lane hooks more, it hooks sooner. And so staying ahead of the moves on that lane is really important. The light shakers for Jordan have carried throughout the week, weekend. In these moments, I would more err on the side of making a little bit bigger move than what I think, maybe one more, just to be sure and know that, hey, if I throw it good and I get off my hand clean, the likelihood of it striking with a light shaker is, is pretty high. But those high hits, almost always four pin, four nine. And that was a trend for everybody in the field, not just Jordan. Golden opportunity here for Sherry Tan. Another opportunity at a double. You can hear how silent it is here at Pacific Avenue Bowl. Need some help. And gets it. There's that light shaker we were just talking about. Every bowling center has its trends. You know, what strikes, what doesn't. The light shakers in this building fall down. $20,000 up for grabs to the winner. 10,000 for the runner up. We're talking about the schedule what's upcoming. The 2024 schedule was also released this weekend, so be sure to check that out, pwba.com. I'm really excited for the two stops in Indiana. Finally going home. I expect Sherry Tan to be there too. And another wrap seven. That one a little bit more vicious than the first. Boy, this one's going to come down to Gary, it looks like, Sid. Absolutely. That was a great shot from Sherry. You know, rep 10s are centimeters from striking. There's not much else you can do. You control your controllables. Make the spare. Get up in the 10th frame, first one in the 10th. Make another great shot. You see the score. been a couple of seven pins and one eight pin for Sherry Tan with three non-strikes. A couple of ten pins, four pin for Jordan Richard stepping up in the eighth frame. Still tied. Oh my. And a 7-10 here in the eighth frame. There were a few of those throughout the building. And she gets one here in the eighth. Yeah, it's, it's been a good this week. Did not waste any time. 
taking the count there. Now the max score moves to 215. Sherry Tan going to be in full control. You know, Jordan's got to get up on this lane and just make another great shot. Give herself the opportunity to win. Wow, and an even better shot there. She wraps a 10 in there. This is their 13th career championship round appearance. She's thrown it so well, certainly not only during the step ladder finals, but specifically said this game. Yeah, and the storyline's coming down to this feels like it did during qualifying. You know, you feel like you're getting some momentum on Sherry. You feel like you have a chance. And something gets in the way. And just when you think you can move in front of Sherry Tan. You're right, a barrier. And that's been the case all day for Jordan. Trying to earn that top seed versus Sherry Tan. That close, close the gap to 15 pins. Prior to the step ladder finals, of course, this afternoon during the round of 12. And now Sherry Tan trying to keep it clean. Been all right on this right lane. High flush again. It's just scary. Like, I'm just watching, and I, I don't really have a lot of words for Sherry because I was probably about 20 minutes into the practice session, and I have a, a, a girlfriend who's a rookie on tour. I thought to myself, she might have a great week. You know, she might have a great week because the left looks pretty good. I thought that 20 minutes into the practice. That also means that Sherry Tan is scary for the week. And here we are. Sherry needs nine here to secure her fourth PWBA title. For the win, there it is. It. Sherry Tan has won the 100th title since the relaunch. It's the PWBA stocked and open in 2023. I don't know what Sherry decides to like think about as the one seed or the snacks that she eats. But I think we all need to be taking notes as future one seeds because whatever she's doing, her percentage just went up once again. She is now four and one in title matches as the number one seed. That's a crazy stat. Like, I can't wrap my head around how crazy that stat is. Which means she has typically been dominant to earn the number one seed and has maintained it throughout weekend after weekend after weekend when she does get that that opportunity yeah and frankly like we talk about it a lot but it never really comes true is you hope that this is what happens you know she led for 24 games almost wire to wire i think we had two leaders before her Sherry ends up finishing with 237 to win her fourth title. But we have two other leaders. That's it. You hope that she wins because she earned it through 24 games. Of course, this is incredible. And Jordan Richard, who deserves that round of applause, certainly. This was her 13th championship round appearance in her young career. Obviously, continuing to put herself there, continuing to put herself in position to win. She is a two-time titleist. That third one right now is being a bit elusive. 
But I, I think this is a a multi-title opportunity season here for Jordan. She is off to a good start here with a runner-up finish. Yeah, Jordan's Jordan's going to have a Hall of Fame career. It's just a matter of how long it takes her to get to, you know, the number of titles that's required. But the only way you get to that number of titles is by continuing to knock on the door. You know, that's all it is. And, and Jordan's here. She's here to stay. She's throwing it phenomenally. And I'm excited to see what the season holds for her. I think it's only good and positive. We're going to flip some cameras and get ready for our trophy presentation with brand manager of the PWBA, Miss Robin. I understand this is the 149th running of the roses at Kentucky Derby. We'd like to present you with the roses. Woo! We, we are celebrating our 65th anniversary here at Pacific Avenue Bowl. It has truly been our, our honor to host these amazing women this week. <laughs> On behalf of the Nakashima family, the entire staff here at Pacific Avenue Bowl, and these amazing fans, If you didn't hear, Sherry Tan just took the opportunity to promote her new YouTube channel. <laughs> Have it, folks. Sherry Tan. We will have Sherry Tan hopefully in the booth here for a brief post game interview, but uh, she's got some photos to take, so we will see if we can make that happen. Uh, until then, uh, we will sit and chat, of course. Uh, boy, Sydney brought it, you know, all weekend long, right? Sherry Tan had proven to be the player to be. And when it came down to it, as you mentioned, Jordan in this case, and it was before in the round of 12, close, 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 and then a barrier hits, and Sherry Tan uh, does what she has to do. She comes away with the victory. What stood out to you about Sherry's performance this week? She kept her blinders on. You know, she was just her. She stayed within herself, within her strengths. She stuck to her game plan. She did what she's good at. She saw an opportunity, you know, and I think the – the key characteristic of any champion is when you see an opportunity, you take advantage of it, and Sherry certainly did that. It was uh, an opportunity to take advantage of, indeed. I do want to highlight uh, what we talked about again with Jordan Richard. 
a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, great bowling this week. Uh, it's not the last time, obviously, we will see Jordan Richard as well. Absolutely not. She's throwing it great. She looks confident in her choices, in her progressions, in her bowling balls, in herself. And like I said, Jordan's going to have a Hall of Fame career. She's just going to keep knocking on the door. I think we'll see her several times more in championship round appearances. We saw Brianna Klimmer perform admirably as well. Uh, another big day, 800 of the final three games to get to the top five. What did you like uh, from Brie tonight? Bree was gutsy. And she was able to make bold decisions when she needed them. And even when the picture wasn't so clear on the left lane, she made two great shots, one with a not so great outcome, right? Sure. The pocket six, sure. pocket six pin, right? right? But man, I would kill to throw shots like that when it mattered. And I thought that was really cool and, and gutsy of her, like I said. Lindsay Boomershine found herself back in the step ladder finals. Uh, made some clutch shots as well to win the opening match against Daria Payoke. Unlucky, perhaps with the seventh pin. Uh, ultimately, her demise against Brianna Klimmer. What did you like uh, from Lindsay? Lindsay made two clutch moves. First, after her, you know, the first two opens, we saw <laughs> right, kind of a right. little, not necessarily a strategy change, but more just a wash of relief from Lindsay, you know, to have that first strike in the third frame. And we saw her settle in to herself. And then the ball change in the second match to give herself the opportunity you know to get that first strike in the tenth that ultimately didn't go her way but it was bold and confident and beautiful for that matter as well absolutely and then finally uh, we saw daria payoke return uh, to a championship round situation uh, we saw her strike in the final shot of the round of 12 game six and game 24 overall to solidify her spot in the top five. What did you like and uh, what did you see from uh, Daria Payo this weekend and tonight? Gosh, I don't even know if it's what I saw from her tonight or, you know, this weekend. As much as what I saw from her when we walked into, you know, the Pro-Am and when we walked into practice and that first roll call. She was just herself. She was carrying herself differently. And I I'm not sure what about it was different. You know, you can't really put your finger on things like that. But knowing that Daria is back, the genuine bowling-loving Daria right, is back, right, where she just right. loves the game. There's no pressure. She's just being herself. I think it's fun to watch, and I'm excited to see what happens for her the rest of the season. All right, to look at uh, our step ladder finalists. Uh, photo still ongoing, as you can see, with Sherry Tan. She is scheduled to join us here for a brief second. Once we get the uh, confirmation on that, I will look toward uh, Jason Thomas for his nod of approval before we close the show. <laughs> we want to thank all of you wonderful viewers here tonight on Bowl TV and throughout this weekend. It's been a fantastic season opener and could not have gone any better throughout. want to thank uh, certainly the Nakashima family as well uh, for all that they have done to make this event possible and great uh, Miss Laura Clark and everybody in between. All right, it does look like we are going to have um, Sherry Tan for a brief moment. I do want to thank Sydney Brumman. I will thank her again for everything that she brought to the table. All right, Sherry Tan will join us here. She is ready to go. Hi, hi. And Sherry Tan, Look congratulations. Right. Thank you. Uh, I talked to you prior to the match, uh, prior to uh, the start of the Step Ladder Finals, and talked about, you know, kind of the game plan, but really what had gotten you to this point. Dominating weekend, you finished it off, and I know that's difficult to do. Ultimately, what did it boil down to for you to have the success that you did across this two-day, three-day event? I think the most important thing is the uh, matchup. So I, I found the shape and the line and the ball to use really early on. So I stuck by it and then it, it, it worked out pretty decently for the, the two blocks. And then I struggled a little bit uh, today. But uh, we all know that the, the match is going to be just one game. Sure. So I just stuck to my game plan and it paid off. 
You did say that uh, as the blocks continued to go on, things started to get a little bit different for you specifically, uh, especially as the only lefty today. So you were experiencing some different things. Did you see uh, anything similar than the title match that you saw in the round of 12 or any other point during the tournament? I bought on 11 and 12 mm -hmm. quite a bit, I think. So I, I checked the notes and uh, I roughly knew which lane was drier and oilier and it was pretty consistent every, every, every block. So I think that helped a little bit. You just won your fourth PWBA title, uh, the 100th since the relaunch overall from a historical perspective. But what does winning four titles on this tour mean, not only for you, but uh, for the Singapore Bowling Federation as well? I think it's really great because uh, for, for any one of us to actually win, it, uh, it, it boats that uh, the, the whole team is doing really well. And hopefully we can continue on the momentum for the next few stops uh, all the way to throughout the year. All right, you're going to Spokane next week. Uh, I know you're looking forward to that. Um, I saw you plug or heard you plug the YouTube channel, so <laughs> I will give you that opportunity to close the show to do that here. Go right ahead. All right, so uh, I have a YouTube channel with Daphne and Hui. So it's The Bowling Trail. Like, follow, subscribe so that, um, yeah, so I have more subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please subscribe. The channel is great. Uh, congrats on your fourth PWBA title, Sherry Tan. I know All you right. got some photos and some folks to talk to. You do that. Congrats, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. That is Sherry Tan, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, for the final time today, we will say so long. Wow, what an opportunity. Uh, what a moment for Sherry Tan, Team Singapore, a fantastic stepladder final as we anticipated. And Sherry Tan in the end edges Jordan Richard in the finals for her fourth PWBA title, 237 to 205. Want to thank, uh, as we mentioned before, John Nakashima, his entire family and staff, and the vice crew, of course, as well. Uh, what an event they put on. I know a lot of work certainly goes into hosting, uh, and they did a fantastic job from food trucks and vendors outside the building to everything certainly inside the fans were spectacular and we appreciate uh, all of them big thanks to all of you certainly the bowl tv community uh it does it's not as fun unless you guys are involved and we appreciate you tuning in from the start to finish uh want to thank our pwba crew robin graves damon sirocco devin jones patrick martinez uh, be on the lookout for the pwba youtube channel as well make sure you subscribe if you haven't great content coming your way uh there as well Big thanks to John Lacido and Ben Crines this week uh, for their expertise in regards to scoring. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one person, and that's Gene Koenig, who is uh, going to have the uh, final results and recap tonight on PWBA.com. I want to thank the United States Bowling Congress and the USBC Board, the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, and the BPAA Board. Again, our wonderful competitors, what a step ladder it was, and you, again, the Bowl TV viewers. We thank you so much. For uh, the final time from Stockton, California, for Jason Thomas, Patrick Martinez, and the entire crew, want to thank Sydney Brummett. What a job she did in the booth tonight and during the round of 12. My name is Emil Williams, Jr. We will see you next week in Spokane, Washington. What's the date, JT? 16? 6? That sounds about right. All right. Next Thursday. Bowl TV uh, in Spokane, Washington again. So for the entire crew and staff, my name is Emil Williams Jr. This has been a presentation of the 2023 PWBA Stockton Open. Watch it live and only on BowlTV.com. Bowling lives here. Good night. Shot, come on. Yeah.